Good afternoon and welcome to Tuesday Talks. I'm Judy Zorn, Executive Director of the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra, and my guest today is Anne Schellis. Welcome, Anne. Thank you. Anne is a violist with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra, and I'm sure that she is a face that, that you recognize. Um, she has played with the orchestra for about 10 or 11 years, and we're delighted that she is with the organization. So, and you come from a musical family, and I know when we chatted earlier that you mentioned you were born in Chicago, but when you were about five years old, you moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan. So maybe you could share a little bit about that with us. Sure. Um, we lived in Chicago because my dad was teaching at Marshall High School. He was the band director there. And... Um, he was also a colleague of William D. Ravelli, who was the band director at the University of Michigan. And Ravelli then extended an invitation to my dad through the university to come to Ann Arbor and teach the trumpet and cornet students in, in the university. So uh, we moved to Ann Arbor when I was five and basically have been there ever since. So then you probably went to grade school, middle school, high school in Ann Arbor. And is that then when you started playing a stringed instrument? It is. Um, in the summer times, we were up at Interlochen because my dad was teaching at the National Music Camp. And we had a, a next door family with young children and they were learning the violin. And I thought that was just fabulous. So when I had the chance in fourth grade to choose an instrument, I chose the violin. And interestingly, my teacher was also a student of my dad's at the university or had been a student of my dad's at the university. It's, so that was a fun connection. It's a small world, isn't it? It is. But then you made the change to viola sometime fairly early on. I did because my same elementary teacher was also the junior high teacher and he wanted to have a good strong viola section. So he asked if I would consider playing viola. And I said, sure. And I've played viola ever since. <laughs> So you played, I, I can only imagine in Ann Arbor, you had a, an orchestra, uh, possibly in middle school, but certainly in high school. Is that true? Yes, yes. And uh, we had outstanding, you know, opportunities in Ann Arbor with the university there. So we had an orchestra, band and choir program in the, in the junior high, as well as in the high school. And my first quartets and everything were started in middle school with kids who also became musicians when they grew up. It's a strong, strong program. And an interesting little sidelight is, uh, I know you've done a Tuesday talk with Liz Burt, who is our principal cellist. Yes. She and I played in quartets together growing up in Ann Arbor. And she was, we went to high school together she was one year behind me, I think, at Ann Arbor High. Oh so my goodness. I've known each other just... for a long time. It's a small world, isn't it? Very. Well, and, and interesting then, you did not continue on at the University of Michigan in music, but you went out east and enrolled in Eastman School of Music, didn't you? I did, I did. You know how kids are. They want to want to get a taste of life away from home. So I went to Eastman, uh, which is in Rochester, New York. But my family had a very, very good family. They were like my second family, whom we knew through the summers at Interlochen. And uh, Oscar Zimmerman was the bass teacher at Eastman School of Music. And they had a son who was my age, and he and I are still great friends. We were both at Eastman together at the same time. So. 
that's fun. That's, that's a lot of fun. And, and it is just really so nice through all the years when you do maintain those kind of friendships and, and watch what each other is doing and, and where you're all ending up. Now you then um, got your degree in education. And so you spent some time in various different public school uh, educa music education programs. I did. I started out in Boulder, Colorado, which couldn't have been a more ideal place to go. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, setting. And I taught everything, drums and clarinet and the whole shebang. So I, after my year in Boulder, I moved down to Colorado Springs and I taught in the public schools there where I was a string specialist. I didn't have to do all of the, <laughs> the wind instruments and percussion, but my, um, I had gotten married in between those two years. And uh, so my husband uh, was in the Air Force Academy band. And then when he got out of the band, he started teaching in the Colorado Springs public schools music program also. And that's where my children were born. Ah, beautiful. So they've got some, some of that out West in their blood, don't they? They do. <laughs> and then you kind of wound your way back to Michigan, didn't you? And I, I think that you mentioned you were in the Midland area and did quite a few different things in Midland. Mm -hmm. My husband uh, studied becoming a piano technician through the technicians at the University of Michigan. And when he had completed his training, we chose to move to Midland because it was such a strong, strong supporter of the arts and the music program and <clears throat> has always been so outstanding. And that's where we uh, remained. Uh, that's where my kids went all through elementary and middle and senior high. And I taught a Suzuki violin program there, which was sponsored by the Midland Symphony. And uh, two other members of the orchestra, a violinist and cellist and I formed a string trio. And we did music education programs three times a year in all of the public schools in Midland and the, and the Midland area. And then I eventually became a teacher in the public schools and taught starting with beginners at grade five and going all the way through to their high school experience with the symphony orchestra and so on and so forth, so. Wow, so you, you could have had a child for eight years. Easily, mm -hmm. many, many times I did. <laughs> and at the same time I was playing in the Midland Symphony <clears throat> and uh, so I kept up playing and teaching and parenting, and it was a busy, busy time. A busy time. You had your hands full. And so from Midland, how, and how do you find yourself up here in, in northern Michigan playing with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra? Very easily, because if you recall my mentioning that my dad taught at the National Music Camp down at Interlock, and then we started there when I was only three. Wow. So I've been coming up to this area practically my entire life and knew it and loved it. And then both of my children ended up in this area too. So when I retired from teaching, it was just a, a natural move to go from Midland up to here. Well, we're so glad you did because you've been up here now. How, how long is it? Is it 10, 12 years or how long have you been up here? Um, I retired in 2007, so 13, 14 years. Okay, okay. Now, do uh, it any time during that 14 years, do you have any private students that you're teaching? I started originally when I first retired with some private students, and they were wonderful. <clears throat> and I always enjoyed the teaching part, but I just decided I... I didn't want to be tied to that schedule of having to watch my uh, clock to see, right. oh, I got to be sure that I'm home today at five o'clock. And right. It was, yeah. So, right. well, you had spent many, many, many years juggling all kinds of schedules with private teaching and Suzuki and school 
uh, music education and performing with Midland Symphony and of course up here with us and and so it it is a very busy life so you well deserve to be able to choose how you're going to spend at least more of your time and um, so what um, I know that you love dogs and you have we've heard a dog in the background and what kind of dog do you have I have an English setter and uh, I, I had had dogs when my kids were little, we had dogs, but then while I was teaching, <coughs> um, I was just too busy to, to be able to take care of a dog. So one of my retirement goals was to get a dog. So my first dog when I retired was also an English setter and her name was Piper. And the dog I have now is named Abel for ready, willing, and able. <laughs> well, those are those are words I think that we all are feeling right now. We're ready, willing, and able to get out and get going, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> we are indeed. We sure are. Well, the orchestra just performed and recorded a week or so ago. And uh, that was exciting. And we're looking forward to a spring schedule and having some live concerts, if that is going to be possible in April and maybe in June. And so how have you weathered all of this COVID pandemic stuff? Anne? <laughs> well, I think I've weathered it quite nicely. For one thing, my dog doesn't let me just lounge in the lounge chair. He says, let's get outside, let's go, let's do something. So we do a lot of walking and I live uh, on nine acres of land in the woods. So we have plenty of area to get out and walk. And we're also close to the lake shore. It's fun to go over there and, and walk too. So we've done a lot of walking and I've reconnected my interest in baking bread for something to do. And so I'm, I'm getting my skills back. It's been a long time since I baked any bread, but it's edible, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, not, not rock hard, huh? No, yeah, no. It, <laughs> it, well, there was a time it seemed like where everybody was breaking, baking bread and you couldn't find any yeast at all. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I do recall that. Well, it's delightful to have you join us today for Tuesday Talks. And of course, we're so appreciative of you and, and your talents with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra. And I know that you'll be part of things coming up uh, this spring and hopefully next season. I know Libra Andres, our music director is already you know, really working on an exciting program for the 21-22 season. So stay tuned for that. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with our viewers, Anne? Well, I'd like to thank you for inviting me. I've enjoyed it and I've en enjoyed being a part of the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra. And I'm wondering if you've ever been on Tuesday Talks with someone interviewing you. <laughs> To know more about you. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I think we should turn the tables, definitely. And I'm sorry I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe sometime, but really, I think everybody is far more interested in learning a little bit more about all these wonderful, beautiful faces that we see up on stage at every concert. And we're so um, appreciative of the orchestra. But those faces on stage can't be there without the faces behind stage. <laughs> well, thank and you. I appreciate that. And I, I'll just sort of keep my face back in, in <laughs> <laughs> back there. <laughs> anyway, I it, it is so great to see you and I look forward to uh, being together again this spring. We are hoping and looking forward to a main stage performance at the Great Lakes Center for the Arts in April and there that date is already posted on our website but more information will be 
coming soon about that concert. So, and again, I want to thank you for being part of our wonderful family, our, our orchestra, and I want to thank all of you for being part of our family and the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra with the support and the gifts that you give and with all the, the good thoughts and the listening that you do. So thank you all for joining us again and thank you, Anne. You're very welcome. Thank you, Judy.